AITA for not wearing the wedding dress my stepsister handmade for me? Weddings have always seemed to me a special moment, a kind of beginning of a new chapter in life, where every detail has to be perfect. My plans were bold and carefully thought out, but even in the midst of this boundless excitement, I could not have foreseen that one gesture of goodwill would lead to a series of events that would turn my life upside down. I have always dreamed of having my own wedding. As a child I used to look through wedding magazines, imagining myself walking down the aisle in a snow-white dress with all eyes on me. My future husband, Andre, was the perfect partner I had always been waiting for. So when he proposed to me, it was the happiest moment of my life. But I never thought that preparing for a wedding could be so emotionally intense. And not just because of the event itself. My father started dating Marina two years ago, and it was a bit unexpected for me. After my mom died, it was hard for me to imagine anyone else next to him, but he seemed happy, and that's the most important thing. Marina is a nice woman, warm but always a little distant. She has a daughter, Zoya, who was a few years younger than me. Her passion for fashion has always delighted Marina, who proudly talked about her daughter's future as a designer. Zoya dreamed of making wedding dresses, and it seemed to me that this was one of her biggest ambitions. When we first discussed our wedding plans, Zoya offered to make a wedding dress for me almost without hesitation. At first, I was a little hesitant. To be honest, I dreamed of a moment when I would choose a dress myself in a salon where everything would be like a fairy tale. But Zoe's offer seemed like a good opportunity to get closer. She and I weren't very close, but I hoped that this joint task could strengthen our relationship. Besides, I was impressed with her work. I had seen some of the evening gowns she had designed for her college projects and they looked pretty good. Do you really want me to do this? Zoya asked during one of our first discussions. Yes, that would be great, I replied, although I still had a certain amount of uncertainty inside me. I think it would be a good way for us to get closer. I promise it will be the most beautiful dress you've ever worn, she said with a twinkle in her eye. We met several times, discussing design, style, and materials. I imagined a classic dress, restrained, elegant, with thin lace inserts, without excessive luxury. Zoya, on the contrary, gravitated towards more extravagant solutions. Bright accents, embroidery, unexpected shapes. I felt that our styles were very different, but I didn't want to tell her about it directly. I hoped we could find a compromise. After a few conversations, we finally agreed on a design that satisfied us both a classic silhouette with light modern details that added a certain specialness to the dress. But soon things started to go wrong. A few weeks passed after our last discussion, and I didn't receive any news from Zoe about how the work was going. Every time I asked her how the dress was going, she just said that everything was going according to plan and that she would send me photos when she got home. But those photos never came. I started to get nervous, but I tried to calm myself down. Maybe she was just immersed in her work and wanted to do everything perfectly. However, something inside me told me that this was not the case. Two months before the wedding, and I started to panic. I hadn't seen even a hint of a dress, and time was running out inexorably. I didn't want to be intrusive, but every time I tried to clarify the details, Zoya looked a little annoyed and her answers were too vague. And so, a month before the wedding, I finally received the dress. The moment I saw it, my heart literally fell. It looked nothing like what we had agreed on. It was a completely different dress. The color was wrong, the cuts and details were not what we had discussed. But the biggest shock came when I tried it on. It was three sizes too big. I stood in front of the mirror and couldn't believe my eyes. This was not the dress I wanted to wear on my most important day. I called Zoya and, trying to be as tactful as possible, explained that I would not be able to wear this dress to the wedding. It looked very pretty, but that was not what we had discussed. I offered to pay her for her work even though the dress was made for me for free. Zoya refused the money and just hung up without giving me a chance to add anything. I couldn't believe it had happened that way. After that, I went to the bridal salon with my friend Maria. I still felt guilty about turning down Zoe's dress, but I couldn't imagine standing at the altar in it. In the store, I quickly found the perfect dress. It was simple but extremely elegant and required minimal alterations. It was exactly what I had always wanted. 
The day I tried on the new dress was almost magical. I stood in front of the mirror in the salon, feeling this image begin to become a reality. My heart, which had been anxious about so many details, finally found peace. I knew that this choice was the right one. When Maria, my friend and chief honorary witness, looked at me, I saw a smile bloom on her face. Is this what you were looking for? she asked, not hiding her delight. Yes, I answered, looking at my reflection. It is exactly what I dreamed of. Simple, elegant, and everything in its place. We stayed a little longer in the salon, discussing the final details with the nail technician who would make minor corrections. As I was leaving the salon, I was overcome with another feeling guilt. I knew that I couldn't wear the dress Zoya had made, but that didn't make the situation any easier. I still felt like I might have hurt her feelings, even though that was not my intention. On the way home, I tried again to comprehend everything that had happened between us. Zoya was passionate about her work and had huge ambitions. She sincerely believed that this project could be an important step in her career. But why did she change the design so much? We had agreed on a completely different style. Or maybe I misunderstood her. Maybe she just wanted to be creative and I didn't give her enough freedom. The next few days were full of hassle. All the preparations for the wedding were gaining momentum. Andrea and I met with the organizers, agreed on the last details of the menu, floristry, and seating plan. However, I couldn't fully concentrate on these pleasant things because the shadow of that conflict with Zoya was constantly hanging over me. One evening, after another meeting with the florist, Andre asked me, You seem upset about something. Is everything okay? I stopped for a few seconds, trying to find the right words. It was hard to explain my emotions, but I knew I couldn't ignore it. It's Zoya, I admitted. I refused her dress, and now I feel guilty. She was very offended. Andre nodded, looking at me thoughtfully. You couldn't wear something you didn't feel comfortable in. The wedding is your celebration, and you should feel comfortable. I don't see your fault here. I know, but I think it's more than just a dress. Zoya tried really hard, and I feel like I neglected her work. Maybe she exaggerated her emotions a bit. Andre suggested. I understand that this is her first big project, but you have the right to choose too. All these decisions should make you happy. I calmed down a bit, although I still couldn't completely shake off my anxious thoughts. Andre was right. It was my wedding, and I had to be sure of every choice I made. However, the situation with Zoya raised more questions than answers. The days before the wedding flew by like a flash. Everything was in place. The restaurant, the guests, the dress. But somewhere in the background of this perfect picture, I had a feeling that something important was preventing me from fully enjoying the preparations. I tried not to think about it, immersed in the chores, but from time to time, Thoughts of Zoya and our last conversation flashed through my mind. The wedding day came. I woke up early, feeling a mixture of nerves and joy. The day had finally arrived. My dress was waiting for me in my room, the one I had chosen in the bridal salon. It looked like it had been waiting for me all my life. I touched it gently, feeling the weight of all these months of preparation ease a little. My friends gathered in the room, helping me get ready. Maria, my maid of honor, was attentive to every detail. She was always there when I needed her support. You look beautiful, she said, adjusting the lace on my dress. It's your day and everything will be perfect. I nodded to her, trying to smile, although the anxiety still remained somewhere deep in my soul. I knew that this would be an important day not only for Andre and me, but for our family as well. And I was still thinking about Zoya. I didn't know how she would react when she saw me in that dress. The ceremony was just fabulous. When I walked down the aisle, I saw the delight on the faces of the guests. Andre stood still, and his eyes were full of love. Everything seemed to be just as I had dreamed. But for a moment, when I met Zoya's eyes, I felt something completely different. Her face was pale, her eyes were filled with tears, and she looked as if she could barely keep from crying. I realized that it was not just an insult for the dress. It was something deeper. After the ceremony, the atmosphere changed. The guests greeted us joyfully. Photographers clicked their cameras and music played. But a strange feeling arises in me, as if everything is not going as it should. I see Marina giving me short, cold glances, and I notice that Zoya is standing off to the side, not talking to the guests. 
I know something is wrong, but I don't understand what it is yet. I approach them, hoping to settle the situation, but instead I encounter alienation. Zoya, Marina, I wanted to talk to you, I began. I understand that you may be offended by my dress, but— You have no idea how much you humiliated her, Marina interrupted me in a cold tone. Her voice, previously warm and friendly, now sounded harsh and ruthless. Zoya tried so hard, and you just destroyed her dreams. I stopped, not understanding why the situation had escalated so much. But we had agreed on a different design, I said, trying to control my emotions. I was grateful for her work, but that dress just wasn't what we had discussed. Zoya stood silently, her eyes looking right through me. Marina continued. It was not just a dress. It was her chance to prove herself, her first big project. And you rejected her efforts as if it didn't matter. I felt a wave of indignation rising inside me, but at the same time a sense of guilt. Had I really done the wrong thing? Should I have found a way to support Zoya? Even if it meant compromising my own desires? Zoya finally spoke up. It's not just the dress, her voice was weak, but there was a hidden depth to it. You don't even know how I felt all this time. I didn't understand what she was talking about. Something in her words alarmed me, but I didn't know how to react to it. The atmosphere was tense, and it seemed to me that now was not the time to delve into this conflict. I decided to walk away, leaving them alone, but the issue remained unresolved. My father tried to somehow resolve the situation, but his attempts did not work. Less than an hour after the appointment started, Zoya, Marina, and my father left. All these events left a bitter aftertaste in me, and I didn't know if I could fix the situation now. The morning after the wedding, I woke up with a heavy heart. Yesterday was supposed to be one of the happiest days of my life, but despite all the good moments, I couldn't forget how quickly the celebration turned into disappointment. After Zoya, Marina, and my father left, I tried to focus on the guests, on Andre, on everything that was supposed to be festive. But the thoughts of what had happened would not leave me alone. Today was like a gloomy day after a storm. I was sitting at the kitchen table in our apartment, holding a cup of tea, when Andre came over and put his hand on my shoulder. Are you okay? he asked, sitting down next to me. His eyes were full of concern. I sighed and put the cup on the table. I don't know what to do. What happened with Zoya and Marina, it's been bothering me. They are hurt, and I'm not sure if I can fix it. Andre thought for a moment. You did what you thought was right. You couldn't have worn a dress you didn't feel comfortable in, especially at your own wedding. I know, I said, nervously running my fingers over the fabric of my dress, but it's not just the dress that's the problem. Zoya said something that confused me. She said that it wasn't just the dress, that I didn't know what she was feeling all this time. Andre shook his head, not understanding. What did she mean by that? I don't know, I answered honestly. But it seems to me that it was more than just an insult for the wedding dress. Maybe she was feeling something else, something I didn't notice. Silence filled the room, and I went back to thinking. What could I have missed? Why did Zoya react so painfully? This question haunted me. I tried to recall our moments together, but nothing out of the ordinary came to mind. Zoya was always quiet, but I never noticed anything special about her. Maybe you should try talking to her, Andre suggested. Maybe she just needs time to think things through. When her emotions settle down, she might be ready to talk. I nodded, although I felt that even a conversation would not solve all these problems. But I knew I had to at least try. Zoya was a part of my new family, and despite all the difficulties, I didn't want to lose that connection completely. Over the next few days, I tried to find the right moment to talk to Zoya. However, every time I called her, she did not answer. The messages went unread. I realized that she was avoiding me, and it made me feel even more guilty and helpless. A week after the wedding, I decided to call my father, hoping that he would help me establish contact. Hi, Dad. I began when he answered the phone. I wanted to talk to you about what happened at the wedding. I think Zoya is very hurt, and I want to fix it. Anna. His voice sounded dry and cold. I don't think this is a time for such talk. Marina and Zoya are very upset. They think you treated them with disrespect. But it wasn't like that. I tried my best to find a compromise. I even offered to pay Zoya for her work. It's not just about money, my father interrupted me. You humiliated her in front of everyone, the whole family. 
She worked so hard, and you just threw away her work like it didn't matter. His words hit me like a rock. My mind was in confusion. Why had everything turned against me? I didn't mean to offend anyone. I just wanted everything to be the way I dreamed it would be. Dad, it wasn't personal, I said, trying to stay calm. I'm grateful to Zoe for her efforts. But that dress didn't match what we had agreed on. I couldn't wear something I didn't feel comfortable in. Maybe you should have thought a little bit more about yourself, his voice remained sharp. A wedding isn't just about you, it's about the family. I felt anger rise up in me. I had always respected my father, but those words were unfair. How could I have predicted that everything would turn out like this? Maybe. I answered quietly, not wanting to escalate the situation any further. We said goodbye, and I was left alone with my thoughts. Was it really my fault? Or perhaps the problem was that I hadn't understood Zoya's deeper feelings. And if so, what exactly was she feeling all this time? After the conversation with my father, it was hard for me to find peace. Every attempt to understand what had happened led me to a dead end. I went over all the details in my head. From the moment Zoya offered to make the dress to the moment she left the wedding. But there was still no answer to the question. Another day passed, and I decided that I couldn't just wait any longer. I had to act. I went to Marina and Zoya's house. It was not an easy decision, because I did not know how I would be met. When I drove up to their house, my chest tightened with excitement. Would this conversation be another quarrel? Or could we open our hearts to each other? I stood in front of the door, hesitating before knocking. A minute of waiting seemed like an eternity before Marina opened the door. Her face instantly changed when she saw me. Her expression was stern, but she silently stepped aside, allowing me to enter. The atmosphere in the house was cold, almost tense, and I could feel it from the first minutes. Zoya was sitting on the couch, hunched over and gloomy. Her face showed no emotion, only emptiness. This alarmed me, and I realized that the conversation would not be easy. Hello, I said, trying to be as friendly as possible. But only silence met me in response. I wanted to talk, I continued, sitting down across from her. I know the last few weeks have been hard on all of us. I really didn't mean to hurt you. And I want to understand what happened. Zoe finally looked up at me. They were a mixture of pain, disappointment, and something else I couldn't quite place. You wouldn't understand, she said quietly. Her voice was tense but also weak, as if she didn't have the strength to argue. Try to explain, I asked, leaning a little closer. It's important for me to understand you. It's not just the dress, is it? She closed her eyes for a moment, as if trying to find the strength to speak. You've always been perfect, she began, and I could feel the tension begin to rise. Everyone loves you. You're always the center of attention. You always have what you want. I was confused, not understanding where she was going with this. Yes. I knew that Zoya had always kept to herself, but I never suspected that she could think that way about me. But it's not just the dress, she added, now looking me straight in the eye, it's Andre. My heart stopped for a second when I heard his name. What does she mean? Because of Andre? I asked again, feeling anxiety begin to overwhelm me. Zoya did not look away, and her words were simple but painful. I love him, Anna. The room fell into a deep silence. I sat there as if I had just been doused with cold water, unable to comprehend what she had said. My thoughts began to jump around randomly, looking for an explanation. I was stunned and didn't know how to react to these words. You love Andre, I repeated, still not believing my ears. Yes, she admitted, her voice even quieter. I've been in love with him for a long time. My heart began to pound in my chest, and I felt emotions rolling in like a wave. All these months of preparation for the wedding, all her strange looks, silence, tension. And here it was, an explanation for everything. She loved my husband. Zoya, I began, trying to hold my breath. Why didn't you say something earlier? What would it have changed? She smiled bitterly. You would have been the same Anna that everyone adores, and you would have gotten what you wanted anyway. And I, I always get left out. Like, always. Her words pierced me, but at the same time they were steeped in sadness and despair. She was sitting in front of me not as an enemy, but as a person who had been carrying pain for a long time. 
I didn't know, I whispered, not knowing what else to say. What can one say in such a situation? Now you know, she added quietly, and now you can live with that knowledge. I didn't expect Andre to love me, but I couldn't stop feeling what I was feeling. I took a deep breath, trying to hold back my tears. This conversation was difficult and painful for me. I didn't know how to react to her confession because it changed everything I thought about our relationship. Zoya loved my husband, and it was a bitter discovery. I don't know what to say, I admitted. Maybe you don't have to say anything, she replied, a hint of sadness in her voice. She stood up and slowly left the room, leaving me sitting in complete silence. My heart was beating fast, and my mind was racing. The revelation about Zoina's feelings completely changed my perception of her behavior. Her efforts to create the dress, her resentment at being rejected all of this, now had a completely different context. It was a hard blow, but at the same time I felt that I finally understood her. She was a person who hid her feelings for a long time and perhaps did not even have hope for reciprocity. But her pain was real. I sat in that room for a few more minutes, trying to comprehend everything I had just learned. This knowledge changed our relationship, and I didn't know how to live with this discovery. After Zoe's confession, I couldn't find a place to sit. Her words cut into my consciousness and left a deep mark. Looking at the situation from a new angle, I saw everything differently. The feeling that everything was ruined because of the dress was nothing compared to what I learned. Zoya loved my husband, and this knowledge hung over my mind like a heavy cloud, obscuring everything around me. My wedding, which was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, was now tainted with bitterness and internal contradictions. I couldn't tell Andrew what I had heard from Zoe. At least not right now. It was too complicated, and I was afraid it would only make our lives more difficult. Nevertheless, I tried to act as if nothing had happened. But thoughts of Zoe haunted me every time I was alone with myself. What was she feeling? How did she hide those feelings? And most importantly, how long had she been in love with Andre? After that difficult conversation with Zoya, I didn't try to contact her anymore. She made it clear to me that she didn't want to talk anymore, and I decided that I should give her space. But it didn't make me feel any better. I felt like I was trapped between my responsibilities to my family and my own feelings. The wedding day felt like the beginning of a new life, but at the same time a great challenge. I tried to enjoy the moments, but my thoughts kept returning to Zoya. I noticed her silent glances as she stood apart from the other guests. Her resentment was obvious, and it only made me feel more uneasy. During the wedding ceremony, I stood next to Andre, and his warm smile was the only thing that gave me hope that everything would be okay. But I felt the weight of the situation falling on my shoulders. Zoya avoided me all evening. Her presence was vague but she stayed close, and I could feel her eyes on me. This created a pressure that I could not get rid of. Every time we made eye contact, she quickly turned away. Her silence was even more telling than any words she could have said. After the ceremony, it was time for the wedding reception, and the atmosphere was festive at first glance. The guests were laughing and toasting, but I could still feel this tension building up inside me. I tried to immerse myself in the moment and distract myself with music, conversation, and dancing, but every step and every gesture seemed too tense. Toward the middle of the evening, when the food and toast began, I decided that I could no longer ignore Zoya. I needed to talk to her. I got up and walked over to her, trying to find words that could somehow smooth things over. Zoya, I said quietly as I approached her. She was sitting separately from the guests and looked as if she had long since lost the desire to celebrate. What? She answered briefly, not even looking in my direction. I took a breath, trying to gather my strength for this conversation. I realize that our relationship is very complicated now, I began, trying to be as sincere as possible, but I don't want us to leave it like this. We are a family now, and I want to understand you. Zoya finally looked up at me. Her eyes were filled with pain and I realized that my presence was only making her feelings worse. You can't understand me, she replied quietly. You've always had everything you wanted. You've always been the one everyone loves and supports. I have always been in the shadows. I sat down next to her, trying to show her that I was not here to judge or blame. 
I never wanted this to happen, I said, and I realize that my actions may have offended you, but I didn't know how you felt, and I didn't know what you've been going through all these years. Zoya looked at me, and her voice sounded pained, but tinged with anger. You don't understand anything. This is more than just a wedding. You took more than just a dress from me. You took away the opportunity to be important. And you took him away from me. I froze. Those words, you took him from me, sounded so painful and yet so poignant that I didn't know how to respond. Her love for Andre was so deep that even though she tried to hide it, it still broke through. Zoya, I began, choosing my words carefully. I didn't know about your feelings for Andre, And I couldn't have predicted it. But I never wanted to hurt you. She shook her head. It doesn't matter now. You've already made your choice. You married him. And now I have to live with it. I could feel the bitterness of her words reflecting on me. I couldn't find the right words to change the situation. And it seemed there was no point in continuing the conversation. Zoya stood up. And I realized that she didn't want to talk anymore. I have to go, she said briefly and quickly left the room, leaving me standing alone with a heavy heart. I stood there feeling the weight of this conversation falling on my shoulders. This wedding was supposed to be a celebration, but it turned into a series of painful discoveries and unresolved conflicts. I didn't know if I would ever be able to mend this relationship, or if Zoya would ever be able to forgive me. After Zoya left, I felt an emptiness. The room, which had been filled with a festive atmosphere just a few minutes ago, now seemed quiet and gloomy. I was left alone with heavy thoughts and a painful feeling that nothing could be changed. Eventually, I returned to the guests, trying to hide my inner turmoil. Andre was standing next to our friends, laughing and talking. His lightness and joy contrasted with what was happening in my heart. I approached him, trying to pretend that everything was fine. Are you okay? he asked, noticing my depressed mood. Yes, just a little tired, I answered forcing a smile. I couldn't tell him about my conversation with Zoe right now. It was our day and I didn't want to ruin it. But with every passing minute, I felt the weight of this situation pressing down on me more and more. Soon my father came up to Marina and me. They looked worried, and I realized that something had happened. Anna, we want to talk, my father said, looking at me. His eyes were serious and his voice sounded depressed. I looked at Andre nervously, but he nodded allowing me to leave with my father and Marina for a few minutes. What's wrong? I asked when we stepped away from the guests. It's about Zoe, Marina said. She looked confused and her voice was full of concern. She went home. She didn't want to stay at the reception. She left. I repeated, feeling a wave of anxiety rise in me. Yes, Marina continued. She's very upset, Anna. She can't accept what happened. She feels that things didn't go the way she had imagined. I know she's disappointed, I said, trying to explain the situation, but I've tried to talk to her. She doesn't want to listen to me. I don't know what else I can do. My father and Marina exchanged brief glances, and I felt that they were hiding something. Their faces showed not just concern, but real anxiety. It's not just about the dress or the wedding, my father said in a quiet voice. It's something more. Zoya is suffering a lot and we don't know how to help her. What do you mean? I asked, feeling a wave of anxiety rolling in. Marina exhaled and, as if gathering all her strength, said quietly, Zoya has changed a lot lately. She didn't tell you everything that was going on. It's not just a resentment for the dress or your wedding. Her feelings for Andre are very deep, and she can't cope with it. I felt a chill run through my body. Marina knew about Zoya's feelings for Andre. This meant that her suffering had been going on for a long time. But what exactly could this mean for our future? She's been feeling something more than just friendship for him for a long time, Marina continued. I noticed it a few months ago, but I didn't know what to do about it. She's been moving away from us more and more. It's hard for her to cope with these feelings, and I'm afraid it will lead to something more. It has become even harder for me to breathe. Zoya has been living with these feelings for Andre all this time, and I didn't even realize it. She had hoped for something that could never become a reality, and now it was tearing her apart from the inside. I'm sorry, I replied, trying to control my emotions, but what can I do? I didn't know it was so serious. We don't expect you to solve it, my father said, 
but we need you to understand her condition. She is very vulnerable right now. I nodded, feeling confused. I wanted to help Zoe, but I didn't know how to do it, especially after her confession. Maybe she needs more time, I said. I don't want to force her to talk if she's not ready. Marina nodded, but there was still concern in her eyes. We will try to be with her, she added, but please don't interfere now. She needs peace, I agreed. Even though I knew in my heart that nothing could bring it back, the entire wedding day became a sad memory because of a tension that could not be resolved. After my father and Marina left, I was left standing there, feeling heavy in my heart. Everything that should have been a joy now looked like a burden that I couldn't lift from my shoulders. Andre came up to me, his face full of concern. Is something wrong? He asked, putting his hand on my shoulder. Everything is fine, I answered in a quiet voice, although I knew it was a lie. Nothing was okay, but I couldn't explain everything I had learned to him right now. I knew that we were going to have difficult times ahead, and even if Andre was my support, I felt that I would not be able to resolve the situation with Zoya. A few weeks passed after the wedding. Life gradually returned to its normal rhythm, but I still felt anxious inside. Zoya didn't get in touch anymore. My father and Marina didn't mention her in our conversations, and although I didn't try to interfere, I was tormented by the question of how she was feeling. I decided not to tell Andre about Zoya's confession. It was too heavy a burden to put on our new relationship. He was my support, and we were building our life together, but I still had the feeling that our family had not become complete. One day I received an unexpected call from Marina. Anna, we need to talk, she said in a quiet voice. I think you should see Zoya. Her words took me by surprise. I felt heavy at heart, but I agreed. I knew that this meeting was inevitable, and I couldn't put off resolving this issue any longer. When I arrived at Marina and her father's house, I was greeted by silence. The atmosphere was tense, and I could feel that something had changed since the last time I saw them. Marina led me to Zoya's room, where she was sitting on her bed, wrapped in a blanket. Her face was pale and her eyes looked tired. Hi, I said, not knowing how to start the conversation. Zoya looked up at me. Her eyes no longer had the hostile glint I had seen before. She looked exhausted, as if she had already resigned herself to something inside. You came, she said quietly. Yes, I answered, sitting down next to her. I had to do it. Silence filled the room again. I didn't know how to start a difficult conversation, but I felt it was time to figure out how to move forward. Zoya, I began after a pause. I know that everything has been very difficult for you, and it's hard for me to imagine what you've been through. But I don't want us to continue living with this pain. I want us to be able to find a common language. I don't know how to do that, but we have to try. Zoya looked at me, her eyes full of sadness, but not hostility. I can't let go of my feelings for him, she admitted, looking off into the distance, but I also know that I can't change anything. I have to live with the fact that he chose you. Her words pierced me. I could see how difficult it was for her, but at the same time I felt that she had taken a step toward accepting reality. It's hard for all of us, I said, but we can't live in the past. We have to move on, and you should know that I don't want to lose you as a sister. Her face trembled, and I saw tears filling her eyes. Do you really want me to stay in your life? After everything that happened, she asked, her voice trembling with emotion. Yes, I answered firmly. Despite everything that's happened, I want us to be able to build something new. We all make mistakes, but that doesn't mean all is lost. Zoya was silent for a moment, and I could see her emotions breaking through again. She reached out to me and, hugging me gently, started to cry. It was unexpected, but I felt the heaviness that had been hanging over us for a long time begin to dissipate. We sat there for a few minutes, tears mixing with feelings of relief. When she let go of me, we both smiled silently at each other. I don't know what will happen next, she said quietly, wiping her tears, but I'm grateful for this. We'll try, I replied and I know we'll make it. That day we took the first step toward healing our relationship. It wasn't the end of our story, but the beginning of a new phase where we could work on building a stronger family. When I returned home, I realized that all our problems were not solved. 
but I knew that I had the support of Andre and maybe even Zoya, and despite all the difficulties, I felt that now we could start living our lives without looking back. My family was far from perfect, but it was in these difficult moments that I realized that we are all capable of healing and forgiveness, and this was the most important discovery of my life.